This was a super simple application that I made just before starting this video. And I was able to create this successfully with no errors with a single prompt. And it was actually a pretty simple prompt. These tools are getting better and better. So basic prompt here was create a home maintenance tracker that allows me to automatically track all my home maintenance tasks. A couple of things to note here. One, this is very simple. This is basically a glorified to-do list with a couple different components to it. So this is not super complicated. <clears throat> And if this was all you were trying to do, then maybe this would be great. And maybe it would be enough for you to kind of go through and iterate in the prompts here and say, actually, let's move this piece over here. Uh, let's change this icon. Um, this thing's not quite working. I noticed a small little bug here. For example, there's like two little settings gears instead of a check mark. That's probably stuff that might be relatively easy to fix. But if you ever want to build anything that is actually used by people, this is not going to cut it. Um, if you ever want to build things that are actually used by even just yourself long term, or if you want to start up like a solo SaaS, or if you want to start doing freelance development for somebody, or if you're a product manager or something that wants to build an internal tool for your team to use, you need to know the basics of coding at least so that you can create stuff like this. Now, I'm not denying AI's ability to help make it so that we can create things without having to write the actual code. That's usually what I do. I strongly do believe that developers' roles are kind of transitioning into more of a code reviewer type of role where we're telling the AI what to do, we're reviewing the code, and then having it make changes based on that. But the crucial step there is that you still need to review the code and you still need to understand what it is doing under the hood. And so I want to offer a little bit of a different approach here for anybody that wants to get into vibe coding, that wants to start building things using these AI tools because they are incredible. And they can literally tend to maybe 100x our productivity and how quickly we're able to output things. Like Even this, what I built here, like, yes, I know how to code and I could have built this but it took me two minutes instead of taking, you know, a couple hours or whatever. And so the tools are amazing, but they should not serve as a replacement for knowing how to code. So if you do want to build things that are actually useful, that actually work, that actually could be made into like production level applications, then that's what this video is kind of designed to, to cover uh, briefly. So a couple different approaches we can take to vibe coding or AI powered coding or whatever you want to call it. One is this, one is just the throw prompts at it, hope that it works out. Um, when it runs into an error, just keep asking it to fix the error with the screenshot. You can probably get through that way and eventually get to something that resembles a working application, but there's a major, major problem with that. And that's, it's going to be brittle. Um, it's going to be a mess of spaghetti code. You're not gonna know how it works under the hood. And so what's gonna happen is the bigger it gets and the more complex it gets, and even just the more prompts you throw at it, the more brittle it's going to get 